The city hall in Almaty charred and still smoldering. The presidential palace was set on fire too. Burnt out vehicles littering the streets of Kazakhstan's commercial capital where these protests have been their most violent. The authorities have characterized the unrest as being led by foreign trained terrorist groups, releasing video like this of cars filled with weapons as proof and horrific images that we've blurred of decapitated bodies. They say 18 security officers have been killed and dozens of protesters, in their words, eliminated, with more than 2,000 detained. The first contingents of Russian paratroopers have arrived in country to try and restore order after President Takayev asked for help from the CSTO, a military defensive alliance of ex-Soviet states. It's supposed to be a short-term deployment. It may not stay that way. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Upriver Crawfish. I'm your host, Sankara. As I told you yesterday, uh, the CIA hand is all the way behind this thing. They're, they're, it, this started all the way back from, this was a strategy brought and proposed by Zbigniew Brzezinski in the Grand Chess Board. But an operational plan surfaced, uh, surfaced in 2019. And let me show you. It surfaced back in 2019. That operational plan was uh, created in a report by the RAND Corporation. It was entitled Overextending and Unbalancing Russia, Assessing the Impact of Cost Imposing Options. So basically, RAND came up with, with different operational plan that the US must put in place to keep Russia overextended and uh, unbalanced overextended both militarily not just militarily but politically economically as well and this plan they had several several different options so, for example, you have one, it was the co economic cost imposing measures, and that is expanding U.S. energy production, imposing deeper trade and financial sanctions, increasing Europe's ability to import gas from supplies other than Russia. And then what they would do, they would go ahead and list the likelihood of success of each of those plans, the benefits, whether it's high, low, and the cost and risk analysis. And they went on. So this went on. It's a whole document that goes to geopolitical political cost imposing measures. And then ideological and information, informational cost imposing measures. Air and space cost imposing measures. There was a, There's a Navy one. Let me go down and show you the Navy one. Maritime cost imposing measures, and that went on. Land and multi domain cost imposing measures. So basically, the RAND went through the whole gamut as to what the U.S. need to do to to impose cost against Russia. But the area I want to focus on is around the geopolitical cost imposing measures and what they listed here. So the geopolitical cost imposing measures, the measures they, they pointed out to take were provide lethal aid to Ukraine, would exploit Russia's greatest point of external vulnerability. But any increase in U.S. military arms and advice to Ukraine will need to be carefully calibrated to increase the cost to Russia of sustaining its existing commitment without provoking a much wider conflict in which Russia by reason of proximity, would have significant advantages. That comes to to what's happening, what was happening before Kazakhstan started when Russia put NATO on notice. 
Increasing support to the Syrian rebels. They had already done that by that, by that time. Could jeopardize other U.S. policy priorities, such as combating radical Islamic terrorism, and could risk further destabilizing the entire region. Furthermore, this option might not even be feasible, given the radicalization, fragmentation, and decline of the Syrian opposition. Promoting liberalization in Belarus, we saw that happen when they tried to and do a color revolution in Belarus likely would not succeed and could provoke a strong Russian response. One that, that could result in a general deterioration of the security environment in Europe and a setback for U.S. policy. Expanding ties in the South Caucasus, Caucasus, expanding ties in the South Caucasus, competing economically with Russia would be difficult because of geography and history. Reducing Russian influence in Central Asia. This is the area here that is related specifically to the five stands. In Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and uh, what's the other one? So that's Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, and there's another one that I'm missing, but those five Central Asian stands. Reducing Russian influence in Central Asia will be very difficult and could prove costly. Increased engagement is unlikely to extend Russia much economically and likely to be disproportionately costly for the United States. Flip Transnistria and expel the Russian troops from the region will be a blow to Russian prestige, but it will also save Moscow money and quite possibly impose additional costs on the United States and its allies. Now, let's go to the grading. So the geopolitical cost imposing options, the likelihood of success in extending Russia, its benefits, and the cost and risks. So to provide lethal aid to Ukraine, there's moderate likelihood of success in extending Russia. There's a high benefit, but then there's a high cost and risk. Increased support for the Syrian rebels, low likelihood of success in extending Russia, moderate benefit, high cost and risk. Promote liberalization in Belarus, low chance of extending Russia, high benefits, but high co uh, cost and risk. And we've seen that. So, expand ties in South Caucasus, low on the likelihood of success in extending Russia, high and low benefits, moderate cost and risk. Reduce Russian influence in Central Asia. This is the area here. There's low likelihood of success low benefits, moderate cost and risk. Flipping Transnistria, low likelihood of success, low benefits, moderate cost and risk. Now, you say, if they, have give, if they give these low grades, then it's likely that maybe they are not trying to do it. No, that's not the case. Just because the RAND put those lists here, doesn't necessarily put this list here and, and give it low marks. Doesn't necessarily mean that the U.S. will want to pick the options that they give high marks to, high benefit marks to. No, all of these are options provided to the U.S. for them to use. And if you notice here, yeah, reducing influence, the moderate effect, uh, reducing influence and in Russian influence in Central Asia, a moderate. The, the moderate and cost and risk to the U.S. is very moderate, according to the U.S. It's moderate from the perspective that, I mean, the U.S. is going to lose its chance to influence those people, but is it not going to be very, uh, 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 prop and that problematic f to the U.S. Yeah, it doesn't have a high benefit, but it has 
it, it has another uh, uh, um, a factor of putting, even if low, extending Russia at that particular moment. And how does that coincide with the situation with Russia? Next week, Russia and the U.S. and NATO are supposed to be discussing its red lines. Just in that time, this happens so that Russia has the mind on, now has to be focusing not only just on Ukraine, and the situation about NATO expansion, but it has to worry about its law on the belly. Remember, Kazakhstan borders borders Russia. They have a 7,000 uh, kilometers, either 7,000 miles or 7,000 kilometers border, very long border, that because they are they were once part of the Soviet Union, it's not, uh, 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 that is not a protected border. It's almost almost porous border except for the the terrain uh, 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 the terrain might be a little bit harsh but other than that it is 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 lightly protected border so the cia is using the rand's playbook i mean i guess i don't know whether you would want to say is the rand's playbook or the cia playbook because these are cyclical. These people work hand in hand. Sometimes the CIA will tell the the RAN and these different uh, uh, think tanks to go ahead and, and, and focus on a project and come back with, with, with a report. Sometimes it's CIA's people who are actually doing it for the RAN uh, as well. So this is all together. This is the operational plan that the, that, uh, um, I call it, that um, coincides or buttresses or the, or the, or the, op, the is the, op, basically is the operational plan for the Grand Chess Board. So, Zbigniew so Brzezinski wants, wanted to make sure that these areas, those these areas he call geopolitical pivots. These are areas where the U.S. can swing into its that into its orbits, and by different means, destabilizing them, corrupting their their their, their political leadership, and to some extent that was almost done, uh, because for a period of time, the Sultan Nazarbayev, the longtime ruler of Kazakhstan was in the west pocket and he was playing he was being friendly with russia so as to not get his hand bitten but he was also playing with the west tony blair even advised him how to and what speech to give and one time to the, the british parliament as well so this is basically the operational plan that the u.s has in place now it is very likely, and like a lot of other things that they put in place, it is very likely that Russia, this will end up being beneficial to Russia. Like the same thing that happened in, like the situation that happened in between Armenia and Azerbaijan in, over the, the battle for Nagorno-Karabakh. Again, that was again part of this plan here to reduce Russia's influence in Central Asia. But at the end of the war, it end up being that Armenia, Armenia needs Russia now more than anything. Russia is the one that's guaranteeing their sovereignty. So it played into Russia's hands. This would play into Russia's hands as well. I don't think, I will say though, I don't think the U.S. used this. I didn't think the U.S. used this. Uh, 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 um, this was, I don't think it was so much. Pre, it was so much of pre-plan to use this because I think the U.S. has realized that it's going to be tough to flip the in, in those stands back to the U.S. because not only Russia but Ch China now is playing a role in there, and also because of few uh, 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 previous U.S. dealings against these these governments so they don't trust the u.s now 
But I think this came into play specifically because of Russia red lines and the conversation that's going to happen next week between NATO and U.S. So this is just another a, a, a vector of attack to put on Russia's plate. So maybe the U.S. wanted to use this as another lever to pull. So when you hear uh, 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 Jen Psaki come out, by the way, the Russians did not, the Russian, at least officially, no Russian government website accused the U.S. The U.S. just came out and claimed that some crazy Russians you know, were claiming that they were part of this. My bet is that that's, <laughs> they were saying that to get ahead of the, 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 the narrative. Of course, the U.S. is playing a hand there. This is a color revolution. Now, don't get me wrong. There are grievances that the Kazakh people have with the go their government. Uh, for one thing, Nazarbayev and his his uh, clique, uh, his his entourage and his fa family have pretty much ran the country like their their own per uh, uh, personal farm. But there's also U.S. hands in it. People go to go and protest about about uh, a few prices, and then all of a sudden, people taking over the government buildings and shooting and killing uh, 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 soldiers and police. This is exactly what happened in Libya. I pointed this out. Maybe people can see it directly, but I pointed this out. I said one of the 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 the, the, the only pluses that can, one of the few pluses in the civil line is from that came out of Libya will be that everybody saw the U.S. game. Every everybody saw the naked aggression. Everybody saw the naked evil. Everybody saw the destruction for which they wrought on that country. On a small country, they went and bullied that country. Everybody saw that. So. Libya serves now as a cautionary tale for every government to be sure to crack down when when these color revolutions start. They're not going to tolerate this. So these guys who the U.S. paid, they better be ready to uh, 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 take uh, refuge in the marble accord because that's what's going to happen to them. And Russia is going um, Peacekeeping operation is beginning, and I mean, basically, once the Russians there, you're not going to do much, much else to destabilize that government. So, anyways, that's an update on the. I uh, just wanted to give more information about why I said the U.S. hand is in this. So, thank you.